Well, it's getting near Halloween in the uh, fall of 2020. We've got a beautiful fall day here in southern Ohio. I'm going to add another oak to this channel while I still got a, just a little bit of the um, growing season left. Although these trees are no longer growing, the uh, leaves are turning brown in different colors. We haven't had our first freeze yet, but the growing season's winding down. Let's take a look at some post oak here. I'm in a unique habitat here in Adams County, Ohio at the Chaparral Prairie Nature Preserve. This is public land, open, it's got several trails back here. This is land that was probably at one time in agricultural use and has been abandoned. And this part of the country also had some native prairies that were uh, natural. And the plants have survived all these years, despite uh, all the farming that's gone on in this part of the world. So this is basically old farmland that is being um, reclaimed by some prairie plants. We've got a lot of prairie herbaceous plants here that are no longer in bloom. We also have some plants that are common along the eastern edge of the Great Plains, the blackjack and post oak. I've got a post oak right in front of me here. And you know, if you didn't know better, you'd say white oak. The, the shade of this bark is almost the same as a white oak. It's just a little bit more chunky than a white oak on average. And the leaves are rounded lobed like the white oak, but they do have some different shapes and a different texture. And the ones that are closest to the ground are a little hard to see here, but I picked some last week when I was at a different park that we can look at. And meanwhile, Mother Nature made this real easy. We actually have a white oak seedling growing right behind this post oak. So you can see the bark is a very similar color. Let's come around the other side here. We've got our white oak here, and I've been using these color strips from Sherwin-Williams for the last few videos. The white oak is the color shade on the bottom, HGSW1497. I did bur oak a couple weeks ago, which is two shades darker. And I'm going to guess that this post oak is just one shade darker than the white oak, but honestly not enough to really tell them apart without using the other features. So let's pause for just a second and let's look, look at some leaves and some acorns. And since it's near Halloween, one way we can remember post oak is it rhymes with ghost oak. And some of these leaves can have a ghostly appearance. It's just a little bit different than its uh, close uh, relation, the uh, white oak. And these have all turned mostly a bronze color. There's a few green ones left out of view here. But again, this bark, boy, I look at this, I see white oak. I've seen thousands and thousands of white oaks in all my years of hiking. And, you know, I see a tree that looks like this. My first answer is white oak. And let's get down here and take a look at some of these leaves. The ones on the right here are from this post oak tree, trees. I picked one last week. It still a little, had a little bit of green left to it, but it's a medium green color, not much different than the white oak. Um, but you can see it kind of gets that ghostly appearance as it gets towards the top. This one I got on the ground here today has already turned bronze, and it definitely has that ghostly appearance. And here's the head of our ghost, and here's the two arms. So... When you think post oak, think ghost oak. That'll help you remember it. I've got some wind issues today. Let's get this white oak leaf here next to it. So there's our white oak. I'll put the pocket knife on there for scale and also to keep it from blowing away. So the white oak, the, the lobes tend to come in deeper and more uniformly deep. They're all about the same depth. And the post oak, they do not. They tend to be more spread out and... The lobes, some come in deeper and some don't. And again, always a lot of variability in these leaves. There's another post oak leaf right there. It looks like Casper the Friendly Ghost. And just for another comparison, here's our bur oak from a few weeks ago. And not really that similar, but again, to the untrained eye, there's your post oak, there's your bur oak. Could be a little confusion. The bark would not be the same on the post oak and the bur oak. There's quite a bit of difference in the color and the texture. And here's our post oak acorns. You know, it's been raining these on this hike today. The wind is blowing them off the trees and they're dropping on my head. And they're very tiny. Not even the size of that U.S. currency dime. So they're very small acorns. The cap is very finely knit. And much 
smaller and a tighter knit than the, that of the white oak. And of course, much different than the large acorns on the bur oak. So this is our post oak, and this is in a barren habitat, which has drier soils and is prone to brush fires, and this area actually gets controlled burns to help maintain these, these rare prairie plants that grow amongst these post and black jack oak trees. I'm going to try to stitch another video onto this um, where I found some post oak last year on a mountaintop to show you other places it can grow. But this is um, post oak habitat, uh, a, prairie for, a prairie that's going back to forest here in Adams County, Ohio. And let's continue studying the post oak tree. I mentioned in the verse video clip a couple weeks ago that I thought I had found some growing on a mountaintop last year. And I didn't take the time to positively identify it. The leaves were all down at that point. It was in January. And I said, man, that's awfully scrubby looking for a white oak. And it's awfully thin soil here for a white oak. And this is on the top of West Rock Ridge in New Haven County, Connecticut. We're only seven or eight miles from Long Island Sound, which provi provides a climate that's slightly warmer than the inland areas of Connecticut. And that's about as far in as it comes, the first row of counties on the southern New England coast. So this is a southern tree. It's at its northern limit here, and it's also found along the eastern edge of the Great Plains where it's growing in stressful climates that may be um, prone to drought or brush fires. And this ridge top would be as well. The soil is very thin. It dries out quickly. And um, again, there was no leaves available, and I was thinking, man, that really doesn't look like a place you'd find a white oak. So I came back up here to make sure I was correct. And sure enough, here's our ghostly appearance on these post oak leaves. Just like I showed in Adams County, Ohio. This is a few hundred miles from there, obviously, but it's a common tree south of where I've done these videos, especially in areas where the uh, habitat is suitable. Here's one that's still got a little bit of green left to it. And there's our ghostly appearance. And here's our bark with that gray shade, just like the white oak, maybe just a little chunkier in places. It's growing all over this hilltop here in a scrub form, maybe 15, 20 feet high, but I did find some full height when I was uh, doing that hike in Adams County a few weeks ago. There were some there. They were 50, 60 feet high, so they don't have to remain scrub form, but in a place like this, they often will because it's such thin soil, they really can't grow quickly or um, you know get enough enough of uh, nutrients from the soil to, to do a good job of becoming a big tree but here they are in the scrub form and this one here is especially brilliant with those crimson colors let's get right underneath this and just admire it you know identification is important but sometimes it's neat just to look at things so let's just look at these colors here uh, we're having a really nice fall here in southern New England it looks like it's early November, but we still got a lot of color to look at. And a lot of these post oak trees in here mixed in with a few other types of oak. So if you want to learn oaks and hickories, come up on these trap rock ridges in southern Connecticut. It's full of all kinds of the oaks and hickories that I have put on this channel. And that's pretty much all you find up on these ridge tops. So we'll put the wraps on our study of the post oak. And we'll be moving on to more oaks when the next growing season starts. I'll be concentrating more on evergreens this winter and uh, look forward to doing that.